We, do you understand what it means? This question. You know the flow curve, remember? We have the Newtonian, we have a pseudoplastic, we have a Bingham plastic, we have a dilaton, we have a Newtonian. So those are flow curve which we determine over a range of shear rate. So this flow curve is also known as multi-point measurement because we measure at different shear rates. But is it always necess necessary to have the whole range, to, to have the whole flow curve? So if you are given a sample, can, can you just measure the sample at one shear rate only and read the, and uh, calculate the viscosity or read the viscosity? That's, that's the meaning of the question. So discuss now and uh, share your answer in, uh, I'll give you a few minutes. Okay. Uh, if, if you have got the answer, so feel free to share with the class. Who like to share? It's okay to, you don't have to worry if you get the answer wrong. The answer for this question, is it always necessary to, to, to determine a flow curve, also sometimes known as, known as multi-point measurement, or is it just sufficient to determine a single point viscosity, to determine the viscosity at one shear rate only? I have a marker pen here, so if you like to explain on the whiteboard. At one shear rate, uh, well, one shear rate, let's say you start from zero, right? One, two, three, four, until say 1,000 reciprocal second. So at one shear rate, maybe you just take, okay, at 10 reciprocal second. And you measure what is the viscosity, right? When you, f when you plot a flow curve, here, well, you can uh, plot uh, shear stress as a function of shear rate or you can also plot viscosity as a function of shear rate. So we can start from zero up to say one, uh, 1,000 or 100. So at one shear rate means you just take one shear rate here then measure what is the shear stress or measure what is the viscosity. Is that sufficient? Instead of you start from zero, okay, one, measure two, and, and so on. Then you get the whole flow curve. The question now is it all is it always necessary to get the whole range of the flow curve or we can just measure at one shear rate? That is the question. <coughs> what is the pros and cons? Anyone? Andrew, <coughs> Lee Ziang, eh, Lee Ziang, uh, Lee Ziang is Kitty, yeah? Uh, uh, Patrick, eh, Patrick, Chris, Christopher. Average. Um, Okay, if we know that the sample is non Newtonian, If you know the sample is Newtonian, is it really necessary to get the whole flow curve? If you want to determine the viscosity of the fluid. Necessary or not? If the sample is Newtonian. Why? Because the viscosity is constant. So actually that is one part of the answer. When you answer this question, you can say, if the sample is known 
to behave as a Newtonian fluid, then it is not necessary to get the whole flow curve. We can just determine the viscosity at a fixed shear rate. There's, there's only one part of the answer. But, so now I'm giving you the answer, not fair. I want the answer from you. So give me the second part of the answer. non turning behavior okay Good try, but uh, I can uh, make it simpler. You know, for non-Newtonian fluid, the viscosity is always dependent of dependent on shear rate, which means that the viscosity is always different at different shear rates. Therefore, if we just measure the viscosity at one fixed shear rate, it would not give us the true viscosity. Because when we measure at different shear rate, well, now we, we fix the temperature, remember? Uh, when we measure the, the sample at different shear rate, it will give us a different value. So what is the true viscosity of the non-Newtonian fluid? That is the reason why, maybe, uh, maybe I didn't mention that uh, in the class, but I hope when you read the notes and other references, you have come across a term Apparent viscosity. Have you come across this term? Yes. Yeah. That is the meaning of apparent viscosity because <coughs> apparent viscosity is the term reserved for non Newtonian fluid only. Yeah. For Newtonian, we don't say apparent viscosity, just viscosity. The reason why we say apparent, what's the meaning apparent? If we translate, yeah, viscosity is kelikatan. So maybe if you want to translate in bahasa, kelikatan ketara or kelikatan uh, uh, it's not a true viscosity of uh, at at uh, uh, that describe the viscosity of the non-Newtonian fluid. Because the, the viscosity always change at different shear rates. Okay? So that's why we use the term apparent viscosity. So let's say if we have a pseudo plastic shear thinning behavior, when we measure the viscosity, it will start maybe from one value. Then when we increase the shear rate, the viscosity would decrease. So if we measure, let's say we just measure in the viscometer, we take one spindle. Then we uh, set the speed. Then we, we measure, let's say, at this one, at say, uh, uh, say uh, 20 uh, reciprocal second. Then we measure the corresponding viscosity. And you read the viscosity. Then you report. The viscosity of this sample is what, whatever value here. But then your friend choose to measure at this shear rate and he will read the viscosity of the sample here and he will report the value as whatever the value there yeah and we will report the viscosity so apparently this value will be higher than this value so which one is the correct one So maybe you know the student A say, "Oh, mine is correct." Student B say, "The mine is correct." Yeah. The problem is 
for non-Newtonian uh, uh, behavior, in this case we have a pseudoplastic shear thinning behavior, when you measure at different shear rate, of course the viscosity will be different. So whenever we report the viscosity, if we measure uh, the viscosity as a whole flow curve, we can check, we can read the value of the viscosity at different shear rate. And if you want to report the value at this uh, shear rate, so we have to report the viscosity at 50 shear rate equal to whatever uh, value. Yeah? And we have to also report the not only the shear rate, but also the temperature at which we measure the viscosity. But for a non Newtonian for a Newtonian fluid, there's no problem because the viscosity will be constant. So we can measure at any point at any shear rate. So a single point measurement would be sufficient for Newtonian fluid, but not sufficient for non-Newtonian fluid because the viscosity is dependent on shear rate. So we need to get the whole, the, the whole picture, the true picture how the viscosity changes as a function of shear rate for a non-Newtonian fluid. It's better to get the whole flow curve. Then only we get a complete picture. The past question, uh, test question, but um, this one for you to. Can you see? So, um, we have two sample here, two flow curve. Okay, we have two flow curve represent uh, the, the dotted line is uh, the name of the sample is source my GA and the, the continuous line is source my GB so Raja Satu menunjukkan flow curve bagi two source uh, two uh, source tomato jenama my GA and my GB so to, we have two different source uh, samples here both sample has approximately the same value of yield stress. But for each sample, uh, okay, in this case, we plot the viscosity against shear rate, starting from very low shear rate up to you know, very high shear rate. And for each sample, we increase the shear rate. Then after that, we do the down curve. Remember, I have described we can, uh, we can get a flow curve by increasing the shear rate. So we call it up curve. Then we can also get the, when we decrease the shear rate, and we get a down curve. So source my GA, as you can see here, this is an up curve, this is a down curve. Source my GB, that's also up curve and a down curve, but they are almost overlap almost become like one line but there are two lines there but they almost overlap the first question the first question is what type of flow behavior shown by sample A and sample B what type of flow behavior shown by sample A and sample B? I give you a hint. I give you a hint. One is both us both are actually non-Newtonian. Okay. Both shows both show shear thinning behavior. But one sample is time dependent another sample is time independent 
would you expect to be portable readily more readily or in other words which sample would flow more readily more easily more smoothly from the bottle imagine you pour the sample now so which sample a or b would flow more readily more easily more smoothly the answer is there on the graph this question has come out uh, in the exam a few times in the test and who knows you might expect similar similar if not the same similar type of question I, I like to ask this kind of question is thinking thinking question nothing to remember nothing to memorize it's application Ayah. Okay, can I can I can I have the uh, answer for the first question? What type of flow behavior shown by these two sample? Sarah, you like to try? I don't know. Uh, uh, what type of flow behavior first? As I said just now, uh, both are shear thinning, right? What's the meaning of shear thinning? When you increase the shear rate, the viscosity would decrease as a function of shear rate. So that's shear thinning. Both are shear thinning. But one is time dependent, the other one is time independent. Okay, let me guide you. Which one is time dependent? Are you sure? How many says A? A is time dependent. Please raise your hand full. Don't half only. <laughs> Kalau full maknanya dia tak confident. Okay. Uh, can I get those who raise their hand <laughs> to explain? Because the next question actually, uh, briefly explain your answer. <laughs> Those who raise their hand just now, do you like to explain? Why, 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 do, why do you say, make, uh, just now you said sample A again, is time dependent? Why? The answer is also simple. Come on, siapa yang raise their hand just now? Come on. Uh, Shapir, raise your hand, David. You raise your hand, kan? Tak. Is that tak aku lah. Okay, tadi siapa kata? Okay, please raise your hand again. Uh, different person pula lah. Kena, kita minta different person pula. We have uh, how many of us here? Okay, let me ask. Who? How many says? Uh, okay, which sample now is time independent? Okay, please raise your hand. Ah, well, who, who, the question is, which sample is time independent? B. B. Okay. Briefly explain your answer. Huh? Hysteresis loop. What's the meaning of hysteresis loop? Uh, you're talking about sample B or sample A. Sample B, sample B has hysteresis loop. Uh, 
Okay, so what does that mean when they overlap? Okay, the answer for this is, of course, sample B is time independent and sample A source my G A is time dependent. The meaning of time dependent and time independent in this case when when we share the sample uh, sample A it will decrease the viscosity then when we monitor the the viscosity as a function when we decrease the shear rate we can see the down curve here does not overlap with the up curve which means that this sample A takes time to recover its structure it takes time to recover its structure and therefore to recover its original viscosity remember this is a structural recovery here in this case simple it takes its time so therefore you can see the two lines up and down does not overlap and you can actually calculate the area between these two lines and that area is called hysteresis loop and this sample displays shear thinning time dependent behavior also known as thixotropy whereas sample B the up and down curve almost overlap which means this is shear thinning time independent the sample can upon uh, at the end of the shearing it can recover the structure very fast very fast so that the two curves almost overlap and the hysteresis loop is almost uh, nil almost negligible so sample B is known as pseudo plastic shear thinning time independent whereas sample B is thixotropy so now the next question is which sample do you think would flow more readily from the bottle how to answer that how to interpret this graph you can see uh, just look at the up curve just look at the up curve Sample B is sample A is the dot, the dash line, and sample B is the continuous line. Look at the slope. Look at the slope. This is at the lower shear rate here, when the samples begin to flow out from the bottle. So you can see now this curve and that curve. So now, uh, which sample now do you think would flow more readily? Almost there, almost there. I, I mean, guide, I'm guiding actually to reach at the answer. Look at the sample. Uh, this is a curve for sample B. This is the curve for sample A. Yeah, this one A. This one. B, which one has a steeper slope? A, a or B? A. a. Visually, of course, we don't calculate here, but visually, you can say sample A has a steeper slope, which means that sample A flows more readily, more smoothly. We expect the sample A to flow more readily and more smoothly compared to sample B. Okay, they have this more. Uh, they have a approximately the same yield stress. Why? Why did I put that statement there? 
Do you know why the statement, that statement is important? Initially here, at the beginning here, when we pour the sample, they more or less have the same yield stress value. Meaning that they, they, they need, we, we need to apply the same stress, the same minimum stress before they st start to flow. So at, at, the, at the zero point, at the zero time, they have the same flow, they have, they have the same yield stress. They need the same force to initiate flow. But when, once they begin to flow, now they flow differently. And obviously, sample B, when we increase the shear rate, the sam sorry, sample A flow more readily compared to sample B. Look at the slope. That's how you read the flow curve. So far, you have not answered any question yet correctly, or maybe just partly. Although I, I, I have guided you, so now I have... Uh, ah. Now, remember the, when I show you when the sample uh, the two sauce uh, were poured on the plate. They spread even non-evenly, right? Which sample now uh, is expected to spread less on the plate? Which sample now is expected to spread less on the plate? B. Reason? Ah. Uh, the next question is, briefly explain your answer. Saya masih lagi tak boleh nak ingat nama. Saya panggil tudung tudung orange lah. Tudung orange, siapa nama? Azura. Azura, okay, Azura. So, Azura jawab, yang mana spread less, B or A? Higher viscosity. Tol? Yes. Higher viscosity. In, in this graph, maybe it looks quite close, but uh, it can be quite significant. So, it has higher viscosity. Mm. Other reason? Uh, that is partly correct. So, kalau 10 markah, 5 per 10 baru. You need another 5. Okay. Zura dah bagi 5. Uh, Hui Yin. Hui Yin, give me another mark. Azura said, this would, the sample B would spread less because the viscosity is higher. When, when uh, after you pour on the plate, on the plate itself, oh my god. Uh, it has a uh, higher viscosity, so it would spread less. But there's an, uh, another reason. Which I have mentioned earlier. The difference between thixotropy and pseudoplastic. Hmm? Yeah, in terms of structure, recovery. So in this case, sample B, we can say based on this flow curve, we can say that sample B would recover the structure uh, very fast. And therefore, it would, it would not uh, spread uh, much because it will recover the original viscosity very fast compared to this one. This one will take its time to recover. So, the viscosity is still relatively lower than the original viscosity and also the, the final viscosity after at the end of the shearing is much lower than sample A, uh, sorry, sample B. Then, so it will spread 
もう which sample is probably will be will which sample is probably will give a better mouth feel understand mouth feel when uh, when you put the food inside your mouth in this case in this case the sauce you know it, it will give you like uh, the the cream the creamy thick mouth feel so now which sample is probably probably will give a better mouth feel a or b i think it's quite simple also to answer now become more obvious simple huh? simple B. Yeah? Sample B. Because it has a higher viscosity at the end of the pouring. Imagine that you pour this sauce directly on your uh, whatever, burger or um, what else that we use sauce for? Ha, cropolico. When? So after, at the end of the pouring, the viscosity of sample B is higher than sample A. So when you put in your mouth, of course you feel more, sample B will be more thicker. More thicker, so the better mouth feel uh, compared to sample A, right? Suggest one ingredient in the tomato sauce that that would give rise to the difference in the flow curve profile that you show here. So why are they having, why do they show different flow behavior? Suggest one ingredient that maybe, you know, uh, can cause the difference in the flow behavior. In the tomato sauce in this case, tomato ketchup. What make one's sauce thicker than the other than the other one yeah it can be a hydrocolloid yeah or it can be modified starch uh, in some chili sauce or tomato sauce they use modified starch but we can also use uh, you know some of the hydrocolloids that would give viscosity, thickening agent. So in this case, we can use xanthan, we can use you know, uh, other types of hydrocolloids that can give uh, the sauce a thick uh, and high viscosity. So that's the answer. There are a few more questions actually based on this graph alone. So I think you are lucky to be here today because uh, in the previous class, I don't really go deep into this, uh, the real application and how you can interpret the flow curve. Yeah? But I was hoping actually you explore on your own because there are so many examples of flow curve uh, in the website and the meaning of the interpretation of that flow curve. In fact, actually, I've given you some links. So apparently, I think you have not explored those links. Otherwise, you would probably uh, you would be able to, uh, to, to answer. So what is important is cost IMK209, as I told you yesterday, I think, yeah? In the exam, and in fact, in the test uh, after the break, you would expect this kind of question thinking question there's no simple question like define thixotropy no define Newtonian never I would never ask that kind of question that is just 
you just remember and memorize the definition and when you see that kind of question you will be ha very happy right oh uh, Newtonian and blah 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 but nothing add to your thinking skill so this is a thinking course <laughs> remember please check and modul <laughs> because uh, there are some activities that you need to do and some of those actually will prepare you for the test if you don't do it at your expense at your risk